All right, we touched on this next topic a little bit in the last uh, video. Um, one thing you want to uh, really get down is progression intervals, okay? And progression intervals are, is the thing we talked about in the last video when we talked about a one to a five chord or a one to a four chord, like a D to a G or a G to a C, one to a four or one to a six. And uh, then chord progression intervals, like a one, a two, and a five. Or an example like Sweet Home Alabama that we did is a D, C, and G. And that song is in the key of G. Um, and that's a five, four, one chord progression. Okay, So these are chord progression intervals. All right, and the, the important part about intervals is that you want to figure out by ear, okay, and this is where your ear does come in, you want to start listening. Um, each interval sounds different, okay? A one to a six sounds a lot different than a one to a three and a one to a five, okay? The most important chord progression intervals you want to get down is a one and a five, really, okay? If you can establish a one and a five, you can kind of, um, you know, go around some of the other chords. A one and a five is, uh, is, is, a, is a really easy uh, chord progression to listen out for. A G to a D is a one to a five. A uh, D to an A is a, is a one and a five. Okay, we have this thing in music called a uh, circle of fifths. Okay, and this is all one to five stuff. E to a B. Okay, another one and five you can hear is like a, a bass line in country music. Okay. You hear that little bass walk in country music and bluegrass and um, even old gospel music. Um, that's, that's a one and a five. Okay, so one and five stuff is very common throughout music used in chord progressions and bass walks. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So listen out for the one and a five. Okay, and this is important because if you get to a five and that's not the chord that you're listening for, you know, you're playing the song, blah, 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 on the radio. And you get to that five and it's it doesn't sound right. Well, okay, try the try the four and the six that's next to the five. Try the four, which in the key of G would be C, and the six, which would be E minor. And see if one of those two work. Okay? A one and a five and a one and a four sound very similar though. Because a one and a six, the, the six is always minor, so you can tell the difference between a major and a minor. But going from a one to a four and a one to a five, the four and the five are both major chords. So sometimes it's hard to figure um, figure out the uh, the one and the four and the one and the five. But once you play this, you can't miss it. I mean, once you once you're playing, uh, listen to a song on the radio and you play a one to a four and it fits, then it fits. Okay. If you play a one to a five and it fits, then it fits. You can hear it almost immediately. Okay. Once you once you nail these chords down and you um, on, on top of the song, there's really not too much guessing around for the most part. The chord is the chord, okay? Um, you're not going to play a two chord and be debating where, whether it's a, a minor seven or a diminished, or if it's a one or a four. Um, these chords are just too far apart, so once you nail the chord down in the song, you pretty much got it. Alright, so be, be listening for that. The one and a five. And, uh, and, and really... Really pay close attention to that. Okay, that is a uh, that's a tonic and a dominant that you want to listen for. That's the uh, musical terms for there. The one being the tonic, the tonic, and the five being the dominant, and the four being the subdominant. Okay, so you notice there's two dominant words there: subdominant and dominant. So that's kind of that's I guess that's a musical term for saying that the four and the five is kind of hard to listen for. All right, so. Another key element to listen to that we talked about in the last video is knowing that chord progressions only consist of a few chords. Okay, Chord progressions don't consist of 5, 6, 12, 20 chords. They only consist of 2 or 3 or 4 chords, really. Um, now, in some cases, this is not true. Chord progressions go on forever in some songs. But for the most part, it's true. Um, a lot of songs only have two chords in them. Uh, Sweet Home Alabama has three. Um, there's just there's just so many so many songs. Uh, I, know, I know a simple song, um, old kind of a bluegrass. You know, Gin and Juice that uh, Fish did. Um, they covered it. Um, that uh, Snoop wrote the song and uh, Fish covered the song. I guess it was Fish, but the whole song is basically GNC. But you know they they do on the mandolin and they change up the keys. But it's, it's just a one a one and a four chord progression pretty much through the whole entire song. So. 
these chord progressions are very short, simple, and to the point. Okay. One way that you can practice your intervals is by playing a scale. Okay. If we take the major scale and you play the one of that scale, then you play the fifth tone, one, two, three, four, five. Then you play the fourth tone of the scale, one and the four. It sounds different. You can tell the difference in that. Okay? So that's important to do because you're not playing chords as a bunch of clusters of notes. You're playing uh, notes, and you can hear the, the interval difference between a one and a five and a one and a four. All right, then maybe try a one and a two. Really close. Just a whole step apart. And then a one and a three. Okay, so let's go through some of these intervals. A one and a two, like I just said, is really close. A one and a three actually makes a chord. A one and a three of um, a major scale is a major chord. Okay, that's all it takes to make a major chord is a one and a three. A one and a flat three is a minor chord. Okay, so if you play a one and a three, it sounds like a major. Okay, then you'd play the one and the four, the one and the five, the one and the six, the one and the seven. A one and the seven always is important because, not important, but easy to recognize because the one and the seven always has this dissonant, kind of weird sound, like it's, it's not working out too good. And the reason for this is, is because my one is a G and my seven is an F sharp, okay? Even though they're seven notes apart, a G and an F sharp in music is close together, so it's gonna make it a dissonant, a dissonant sound. Okay, it's like a major seven. Okay, so let's take this a step further. A one and a four and a five, you wanna listen out for it, they're all majors, okay? That's the, really the hardest part, that the one, the four, and the five are all majors. One to a four, one to a five. One to a six is real easy because the six is up there all by itself and it's the only minor up there. Because you got your first chord is a major, second and thirds are minor, fourth and fifth is a major, and sixth is a minor, and that's pretty much it. So the sixth is sitting up there by itself, all by itself, it just as a little minor chord, waiting to be heard. All right, so one to a four, one to a five, one to a six. Then you got your one to a two. And one to a three. And you can uh, you can kind of pick those out pretty well too because they don't sound like the relative minor. Okay, Re remember that the relative minor, in this case would be E minor seven, applies to every key though. The relative minor um, could be a starting chord for a song. It starts on the chord, uh, relative minor begins with the chorus or the verse. Uh, remember the tonic and the relative minor are usually two key points of the song. Okay, so the second and the third uh, chords of the song, the two other two minors are pretty easy to recognize. All right, um, let's, let's establish the difference between these. The second chord, this is kind of hard to explain, but a, a two chord kind of sounds like the song's about to change or there's about to be a buildup. Um, a two chord happens a lot on a bridge. Okay, I'll give you an example. Playing a chorus, I go to a bridge. of course to the one okay so you can see when I went to that bridge I started walking up walking up chord progressions two to a three to a four to a five two three four five sorry I messed up there um, but go back to the two so it's it's pretty close to the one but it sounds like the whole song's about to change so that's kind of a bridge chord a two okay it usually does a lot of walks and then you can tell I go back to the one because the song sounds like it resolves. Okay, so that's that's listening out for intervals. All right, so um, be careful with that, and that's the uh, next uh, step in learning how to play by ear.